Good morning, this is Chris Shoemaker, also known as Yehuda Ben Shamir, and you're listening to Coffee with Chris, the time of the day where we share a cup of coffee and share a bit of the Word of God. It's a new week, it's a new Torah portion, so we're combining Sunday and Monday's Torah portions because they're so short, and we're combining these Sidras, these Aliyah, uh, into today's devotional. Now, this Torah portion is called Naso, which means to take, and it's taken from Numbers chapter 4, verse 21, all the way to chapter 7, verse 80. And so we begin in uh, Numbers chapter 4, and we're going to be reading verses 29 and uh, 31. And it says, As for the descendants of Merari, take a census by clans and families. Of though of all those between 30 and 50 years old, all who will be in the core doing the work of the service in the tent of meeting. Now, this doing the work of the service in the tent of meeting, the Hebrew implies that it's hard labor, that it's heavy lifting. We would know it as blue collar work. So now this clan of Mererai, interestingly enough, it means unhappy. And it's taken from the word Mara, which is usually a female name, which means bitter. So Mererai is related to the word Mara, which means bitter, which means unhappy. And you know in the book of Ruth where Naomi went back to her hometown and everybody's like, oh, great, Naomi's back. Don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara because the Lord has made my life bitter. And she said that because she had lost her husband and her sons and she returned by herself with her daughter-in-law, Ruth. So Mererai means Bitter. And it's interesting that one of the responsibilities of the, Mer, uh, the Mererai clan, their duties regarding the tabernacle is when it was dismantled, they were the ones who had to carry the beams and the crossbars, the skeletal structure of the tabernacle. And I want to relate that to Matthew chapter uh, uh, 26, verses 36 through 39. It says, then Yeshua, came, then Yeshua comes with them to the place called Gethsemane. He tells his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took along Peter and Zebedee's two sons and began to be sorrowful and troubled. In other words, he was bitter in spirit. Then he tells them, my soul is deeply grieved, even to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell face down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Now, let's go to John chapter 19, verse 17. It says, Then they took Yeshua. He went out carrying his own crossbar to the place of the skull, which is in Aramaic, is called Golgotha. So it's interesting that the Mererai clan kind of foreshadows in a very subtle way Yeshua the Messiah because Mererai means unhappy, it means bitter. And they had to carry the cross beams and the crossbars, the skeletal structure of the tabernacle itself. What did Yeshua do? Yeshua, he became unhappy. He became bitter and grieved in spirit because he knew he was going to die for the sins of the entire world. And what did he carry on the way to his crucifixion? He carried the crossbar. I think that's a very interesting parallel. Now let's go to Matthew chapter uh, 16 and read verses 24 through 26. Then Yeshua said to his disciples, if anyone wants to follow after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross. In other words, Yeshua is calling us to take up on bitterness in a sense. The bitterness of this world by taking on his suffering and taking on our own cross beam, our cross. And he says, take up your cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world but forfeits his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Now, what do we get when we, when we embitter ourselves and take up our own cross and follow him? That bitterness is exchanged for joy. That bitterness is exchanged for peace. There's a passage in the Old Testament that says that he turns my mourning into dancing and he exchanges beauty for ashes. So um, basically, 
When we deny ourselves, and denying ourselves is a very bitter process, we can become unhappy when we deny ourselves because our flesh wants so many things. But when we deny ourselves, we learn what true satisfaction is, what true peace is. Even though our flesh may be embittered, our spirit is at peace and at rest, and it's worth more, and it's more enjoyable than the titillating of the flesh. So I just think that's kind of an interesting parallel for Sunday's uh, um Sidra or Aliyah. Now let's go to Mondays, which is, um, I want to go to Numbers chapter 4 and just read verses 46 and 48. So Numbers chapter 4, and it says in verse 46 through 48, the census of the Levites, whom Moses and Aaron and the leaders of Israel enumerated by their clans and families, all those between 30 and 50 years old, who were a part of those who who's working to serve and working to carry the loads in the tent of meeting, yielding a total of 8,580 persons. Now, it's a pretty tedious task to, to disassemble and to reassemble the tabernacle every time that, the, that they moved. And sometimes they would only be in a location for days. Other times they would be there months, maybe even years. And just think of all the hard work that it took to erect a tabernacle and disassemble it and to load it on carts minus the furniture which was carried on shoulders and to set out on the journey to the next campsite but also think how fast that operation would be with over 8000 people okay you think of a circus big top tent it's a huge tent it takes a lot of manpower and effort to put that thing up but with everybody in the circus working together it could be put up within the hour you think of a military unit, which the last Torah portion enumerated the children of Israel as a military unit by their tribes that were eligible for military service. Well, think of 8,000 Levites, over 8,000, and how fast it would be to erect the tabernacle. I mean, they, they could probably erect it and dis disassemble it with their eyes closed. It was probably put up within hours. I mean, probably even less than an hour. It was probably put up very, very quickly. and so. That just goes to show you that when we all work together, we can accomplish great things. You know, many hands make light work, even though it was hard labor, even though it was blue collared work, it went by pretty fast and the burden wasn't too heavy because everybody had their role. Everybody had their part. Everybody knew what they were supposed to do. And when they did it, it was like precision clockwork and it was done very, very fast and very, very well. We need to take a lesson from that in the body of Messiah when we set out to do evangelism, when we set out to do ministry uh, within our, our, our congregations. So guys, thanks so much for listening. Thanks for joining me. Visit www.abrahamsdescendants.com. Check out the Rabbinic Pastors podcast and the Rabbinic Pastors pulpit and subscribe and the Christopher Shoemaker YouTube channel. All right, guys, see you tomorrow. Shalom and God bless.